All right, so I think I've dialed in the audio on this Rode Wireless Go To. So, you know, mainly doing this for listening to the volume level and quality. The last video, no one's commented as far as I could tell, last I checked, but I could tell the difference between this built-in condenser. And I've tried something different. I have it clipped on my sweatshirt here. Hopefully it doesn't muffle. It sounded kind of rough the other time. I don't know if it's because it's sitting against your chest and it's vibrating. I don't, I don't know. I always see people in other YouTube videos have these kind of clipped in their shirt like this. Hopefully it sounds okay. I guess if it doesn't, uh, I'll find out and you guys can tell me. Either way, uh, I'm going to talk about something. You see all the Fuji lenses here. Uh, while I'm doing this, at least you have something to listen to. I really uh, liked uh, Edward Thomas. If you guys watch his channel, he used to be Photo Universe. Uh, he did a series of videos testing video quality, uh, comparing uh, Nikon's his Z6 to uh, ZFC and then his old X-T4. But he was doing it while talking about, you know, photography subjects. And it was interesting because it was like you could look at the quality of the footage, but also just listen to what he was talking about. I thought that was pretty cool. So nice job, Ed. And I'm uh, kind of copying your style here. Different topic, though. So <clears throat> I've been shooting Fujifilm X-Series since the, I guess the X100S was the first camera I got. At the time, I was shooting a Nike, my, sorry, my main uh, camera at the time was a Sony NEX6, and I still had a NEX5N too, which I still even own years later just for, in an underwater case. It's another, another story for another time. But uh, I bought the X100S because I'd always wanted the X100, and then that was the second version. Tried that, was hooked on it compared to the files of the NEX6, which back then, you know, Sony used a, anti-aliasing filter on their 16 megapixel sensor. So the X100S had like t twice as much detail with the same file size. So it was like night and day. And I just love the Fuji shooting experience. You know, kind of reminds you of an old film camera. That's kind of where I started. And then X1 or X Pro 1 and then later X-T1 and then the X-H1, which is filming me right now. And then I later got the X-E3, sold the other stuff. These are the only two Fuji bodies I still have, and they're kind of my main camera. I have a Leica that I also have, uh, M246, that uh, I think I've posted a little bit of videos about it. <clears throat> Don't use it nearly as much, but it does have really cool files, the black and white files. Another topic uh, to discuss some other day, but <clears throat> I've been happy with this system, but more and more video, I'm shooting more and more video, like on our family trips and stuff. We went to uh, Disney World, Florida. Uh, over the summer and most of the I shot mostly video on the X-H1 didn't really take too many stills uh, we went to Palm Springs back in November and I took the X-E3 and mostly just shot video and then yet again I visited my uh, brother in Austin we went and visited him uh, during December brought the X-E3 almost entirely video I just, I just took some stills when we were taking fire or lighting off fireworks on New Year's Eve but uh, I did take a bunch of video too. So most of the trip was just video. So anyway, long story short, I'm shooting more video than stills these days. And Fuji, I would say, is more appropriate for stills, but it does video. It's doing this. It does well. But I'm not sure if the X-H2 will ever even exist because Fujifilm can't seem to even get the the 27 millimeter WR and the 70 to 300 these lenses they announced like a year ago are still on back order and whatever the pandemic, this and that, but other manufacturers are getting some stuff out. You know, maybe Nikon's having issues. I know with the Z9, but it just seems like Fuji can't actually ship any products. So I'm really questioning if the X-H2 will even exist in 2022. It might like be announced and then come out at the end of the year and not even be obtainable until 2023. And I'm kind of like questioning Fujifilm at all. Like, are they... Do they have a future? Are they just, I know they're focused on pharmaceuticals now and like maybe they're just kind of, I don't know, from a business standpoint, I know the camera market is like plummeting. Uh, Tony and Chelsea Northrop always love to post videos about that. So maybe from a business decision, it makes sense, but it kind of pisses me off. And then I still don't think they're the best for video. They definitely caught, a, you know, close up with the X-T3, maybe the X-T4. But... I don't know. 
they're still maybe behind in some ways, but my issue mainly is, you know, you think like Lumix, like the S1, like it's a video camera that does stills too, but I can't get into the whole DFD contrast focus. It's, tr it's, not, it's not as good. I don't care. There's so many videos of people trying to say it's as good or comparable, but like if you watch the videos, it's not. The DFD is easily fooled. My old X-H1, honestly, I think does better than the, like the S5. If you, if you watch its focus, and even the IBIS, the IBIS on this old camera is very comparable. Let me check the time. Uh, very comparable to these newer cameras, maybe better. And, you know, like Sony, for example, they're, they're I don't even know if, like, they really have IBIS. It's like, I know it's there, but, like, it doesn't, doesn't really work. So I'm kind of conflicted because it's like maybe, you know, Sony obviously will blow away Fuji for autofocus. But, oh, by the way, speaking of autofocus... I'm hoping this doesn't move as much. I noticed in my last video, every time I did my Italian hand gestures, it kept getting caught. So and I'll pop up some pictures to show you this. This is what I was talking about in my other video about how their descriptions of their settings are really funky. But I, for this video, I have the box. I forget face. It's not, I don't trust it when I can't see it. I'll use it when I'm behind the camera and can see if it's working. But when I'm just watching my tally light here, uh, I don't trust the face detection on, on my Fujis. It's not as good as a Sony or, a, you know, an Icon or a Canon. So I have the box on my face, continuous focus, but I changed tracking sensitivity to plus four, which is weird because you'd think that means it's faster, but that actually means it's locked on. And I'll show you a screenshot of this, and it's not quick. <clears throat> Mainly meaning it's locked on my face right now, and if I put something in front of it, it's not going to get a... It's not quick. It's not going to get fooled by my hand right here. If I hold it up long enough, maybe like this long, it's going to eventually focus on my hand. I'll find out when I review the video. And then it's going to probably take a minute to get back to me. But it's not easily going to get tricked. At least that's the claim. Uh, AF speed, I left the same. I've had it at negative two for a while after watching, who was it? Uh, Philip Bloom. Uh, he was trying to get the AF on his Fujis to work, and I think he just gave up on it. But uh, it seems like him and others have said, you know, it seems like the slower speed is better. So negative two seems to be better than zero, which is the default. But so where I'm at now is, you know, I, this is my Fuji gear. So I have the 80 macro, the old, this is one of my oldest lenses, the 55 to 200. I bought this back in the, my X-Pro1 days. Uh, 56, this is also almost as old. I had this first, but... This is I've had forever. These have like the old style pinch caps that have the terrible design, the original Fujifilm pinch caps. Uh, 16 millimeter, this, these, I mean, I really do love these three lenses. Uh, 16, one, four, this is awesome. And then I got the 18 to 55 with my X-E3. I replaced my original 35, uh, one, four with the F2 and mainly because it was faster for focusing, silent, comparative to, to the old 1.4 and at the time I thought the results were similar I'm not starting to quite second guess that but it's so much smaller and quieter I don't really regret it I when I did a B comparisons back then I didn't see a difference and then the 27 which is a piece of crap image rendering is nice I like how small it is it's very sharp renders good but it broke the AF motor broke and I had it repaired by Fuji right before the WR was announced and I kind of regret it because I should have just bought the new one and it's starting to make clunking sounds again. This this is this Chinese-made piece of junk. It's like such a piece of crap. I got it on sale years ago for $199. I think it's okay at $200, bucks, but if you paid the retail price of $450, Fuji's just sticking it up your ear because it's a total piece of junk lens. But at least it it's small. I like it on here. And the only other thing you can't see is my X-H1, obviously. And the 50 one, one, uh, sorry, 50 millimeter f2, which is actually a really good lens. I think my favorite lenses are the 16. I, if I had to pick one, I think the 16 one four is my favorite. Uh, probably the 50 f2 would be my second favorite. 56, while it, you know, it's really cool with the bokeh it has, I don't use it as much. Uh, I do like the 55 200, don't use it as much. The 18 to 15 5, hated it originally, but now I'm okay with it. It's kind of versatile, nice. Maybe my copy's not as sharp as some people say. And then the 35, I kind of don't like it anymore, but keep it because I need one at 35 sometimes. And then the 80 is very limited use. I've 
toyed with selling it several times. So maybe I sell all of this or sell most of it and go to like a Sony a7 IV. I don't know if I want to do that. I think the video would be better, obviously. It's kind of lame how like it's 4K60, you have to have a crop, because then it's like, well, I could just get an X-T4, which already has a crop 4K60. But I don't want the X-T4. I think it's an ugly camera and it seems like it has focus issues. There's many channels have shown it's like an inferior autofocus to the X-T3. It's very weird. So I'm kind of uh, conflicted. Like, do I... I'm not going to keep a third system, so... It kind of in my mind, if I go Sony, which is like going to the dark side, they're no soul. I feel like Sony is like for people who don't like photography and just want to take pictures. Uh, yeah, I, I really don't like the idea of going to it. Their bodies are hideous. The ergos look pretty horrendous. Though I haven't picked up, a, I would admit, I haven't picked up an A7 IV. I held an A7 III at a Best Buy last year for a couple minutes. It didn't have power. I don't know if it was broken or what. Uh, it felt okay. It felt a little bit weird. The original A7s were pretty stupid and I don't, I don't know. So I'm not really keen on it and then I got to invest in a whole bunch of new lenses, though the Sony does have some decent primes that are pretty cheap, but uh, I don't know. I'm kind of all over the place with this, but I keep watching these A7 IV videos and uh, it's definitely compelling. The autofocus, it just seems like it it's almost like it, it, it know it like knows what to focus on before you even tell it to. It's, I was watching some videos today. It's like ridiculous, where you have the one of the videos they had like the tree branch and then something in the background and Fuji, especially if you do single box. If any of you guys shoot shot a Fuji, it easily will get keep just thinking it has to focus in the background. <clears throat> the only way I found to get it to work. When you have that scenario where like there's two different things almost overlapping, one of them is way closer, is you have to do a, a zone area focus. And I think it's because it's seeing multiple focus points, seeing some contrast or something, and then it knows that that branch is in front and to focus on that. But if you do the single box, it's like it will refuse and always want to focus at infinity. It's kind of reminds me of old, like my old iPhone 7, where it's like an, the old iPhone 7 I had, even my 12 Pro, but the iPhone 7, it like it always just wanted to focus on infinity. You would literally have your kid in front of you and you take a picture and it's focused on the trees behind them. I don't understand why cameras seem to, shitty cameras want to obsess over the infinity focus, but I think at this point I'm rambling and it's definitely probably been more than 10 minutes, so I'm gonna wrap this up. Yep, I'll cut some of this out. So what do you think? You think I should uh, give up on Fuji and go to the a7 IV and swap out lenses or maybe compromise and do support two systems? Because like, I don't know, the X-C3, maybe I get a little bit of money for it. It's not worth much. The X-H1, I don't think I could sell it. I just feel like it's not worth much and it's a cool camera. So like maybe I sell like the 80 and maybe the 55 or 200, maybe just keep like the X-H1, the, maybe the 56, the 16, I don't know, and then sell the rest of it, but then I'm stuck with the three systems. It's, it's all unfortunate. Or do you think Sony is evil and soulless crap, and even though they have superior capability, shooting them is trash? Tell me what you think in the comments, and keep in mind, some of you are probably going to trash me for this, but I don't shoot raw. I don't tried it I don't care for it I don't I don't like editing I, I do little minimal edits on the JPEGs like if, if it doesn't look exactly perfect or I want to add a little bit of pizzazz to it once I've transferred it to my phone or my iPad I might edit them a little bit in the native Apple photo app because it has all those adjustments since like iOS 14 or whatever a few iOS is back uh, that's like the minimal I do so I shoot JPEG and Fuji I still think seems to be the most catered to good JPEGs I'm not keen on if Sony nowadays, vintage Sony, they, they weren't nearly as nice. You just had a minimal adjustments, uh, the NEX days. But maybe, I don't know if Sony gives you a little bit more flexibility or if the files are any good. Uh, I don't care about RAW, so if the RAWs are great but everything else is no good, then it doesn't matter. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of it. So let me know what you think, and uh, hopefully the audio is good. If it's terrible, uh, let me know.